Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. entitled Mediterranean Rescue, the story of Captain Kendrick Reeves, United States Air Force, the story of an amphibian pilot with the 58th Air Rescue Squadron, 7th Air Rescue Group, stationed at Wheelis Field in Tripoli, Libya. The names of the other characters have been fictionalized in this story of a rescue mission that won for Captain Reeves a recommendation for the Distinguished Flying Cross. America looks up to her men in the sky. Yes, our country looks up to the young men thundering their way to new glory in the skies. Theirs is a task held in high esteem by the entire nation. You are needed to swell their ranks and can do so by enrolling now in the Aviation Cadet Training Program of the United States Air Force. If you are between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, have had two or more years of college and are otherwise qualified, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and ask about the Aviation Cadet Training Program. Do it today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Mediterranean Rescue. <laughs> airliner, an American-made DC-3. The British nicknamed it Dakota. It took off from Malta less than an hour ago. Now, somewhere over the Mediterranean, it's heading toward Benghazi on the Libyan bulge. A scheduled flight, a routine flight. Let's meet some of the passengers. First, Mr. and Mrs. Bentley. Margaret? Yes, Joe. Tired? Oh, no. No, dear. Just relaxing and thinking. What a wonderful holiday this has been. Yes, I'll regret when it's over, dear. So will I. I hope we don't find Tewkesbury rather dull after this. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you standing there. My watch has stopped. I would like the correct time if you have it. I think so. Um, five past one. Thank you. So that is correct? What is? The time. Well, I have no reason to question it, sir. I set my watch at the airport in Malta by the clerk of the waiting room. Thank you. Does not matter. Hmm. Well, that's a pompous boor. Who is he? I don't know, dear. I think his name's Maydeck. Joe. Good heavens. The plane's rolling. Stepping to one side. Quit falling. No, no. Uh, he must have slipped into an air pocket. Oh. All right now. Quite all right. And they were quite all right, but only for the moment. In the meantime, at Wheelis Field in Tripoli, Captain Kendrick Reeves and his co-pilot, Captain Douglas Clayton, were whiling away the last few minutes of their duty tour on alert. 1335. Keep moving, hands. Oh, stop watching that clock, will you, Doug? You're making me sleepy. Well, who's going to watch it if I don't? 25 minutes to go, and then freedom. Sleep, perchance to dream. <laughs> hey, and that reminds me, I never told you about that dream I met the other night. What, another one? <whistles> this was it. The most gorgeous, the most... Ken, I've never seen anything like her. What happened? What happened? What happens every time I meet the woman of my dreams? She has a husband or a boyfriend. I'm the only guy in the world who seems to miss the boat every time. <laughs> Uh-oh. Unhoist yourself, Doug. I'll get it. Thanks, Pa. Reeves talking. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, Tom, right away. Round up the boys and, uh, oh, yeah, make sure it's the uh, SA-16 Albatross, because we may have to make a water landing. Finley wants to see me. There goes my sleeve. And mine. Get moving, Doug. There's trouble on the water. <laughs> That's all, Tom? That's all I came through, Ken. It could have lost its left engine, tried to make it to Benghazi and the other one, but couldn't. One fan just wouldn't hold it. They're losing altitude and preparing to ditch. Uh-huh. How long ago? Fifteen minutes. They were dumping all the luggage, but they still couldn't maintain altitude. It was 1340 now. Didn't you have anything more from them? Not a peep, Ken. Nobody else did either. I checked with the RAF base at Castel Benito and with the other okay, one. Okay, Tom, what was the position? 34 degrees, 10 minutes north. 1710 East. How many people aboard? 32, including the crew. 32 at Dakota? Yeah. I know what you're thinking. With every break in the world, they'd be lucky to stay afloat five minutes. Okay, I better get going. There might be one outside chance they get out of that plane. At 1400 on the nose, two o'clock, Reeves, Clayton, and a crew of four took off in their Grumman Albatross and headed toward the position reported by the distressed Dakota. Then, an hour and 35 minutes later, at 15.35... 34 degrees, 10 minutes north, 17.10 east. This is about it, Ken. We're in the area the Dakota sent the distress call from. See anything, Doug? No, not on this side. Well, there's nothing on this side, either. Check with radar. See if they can see anything on their screens. Look at those swells kicking up. Must be at least 10 feet high. What a time to get rough. Even if those people manage to get out, what chance would they have against that? Uh, even if they manage to get out. If they had the time. What do you mean, Ken? Well, the Dakota might stay afloat at the most about 15 minutes. Those waves down there. Doug, get in touch with other search and rescue craft. Get information. We'll make a route search along the Dakota track. <laughs> A route search along the Dakota track, the track from Malta to Benghazi. But no one knew whether the Dakota tried to return to Malta or flew toward Benghazi. Captain Rees had to use his judgment. He followed the track toward Benghazi. No, nothing yet, Ken. Nobody has any information. Nobody sees any sign of a single survivor. Yeah. It's 1,600, Ken. If there were any survivors, we'd have seen them by now. Somebody would have seen them. Maybe. Boy, look at that water now. It's getting rougher by the minute. Now, wouldn't you know it? It's beginning to rain. We're not quitting, Doug. Well, who wants to quit? That's my boy. There's one possibility. Is anyone covering the track from position back to Malta? Yeah, a couple of Lancasters. Okay, we stick on the track to Benghazi. Two more minutes. Then we'll swing left. That's probably the direction the Dakota took on account of the dead engine before they hit, before they could let anyone know. There's months. Three hours we are in this life raft. Nobody cares. Nobody's even looking for us. That is your capitalistic competence. Your bourgeois humanitarianism. Life means nothing. We don't care for your lectures, Mr. Lady. You will get my lectures, Mrs. Bentley. We will not fly to Benghazi to get lost in the middle of the Mediterranean. Die like a wet pig. And I do not appreciate your British courage. Or your British calm. Oh, shut up, will you? You at least are in the rot. My husband isn't. Now, that is my fault, huh? Because there is no room for him? You made sure of getting your place, didn't you? Of course. Why not? My life is worth more than all of you put together. You, your precious life. Joel? I'm... All right, Margaret. Are you sure? Yes. yes but uh, how about you? Don't, don't worry about me. I've been hanging onto your arms so long. Don't worry about me, Joel. Uh, Margaret... Perhaps I could hold on to the side of the raft. No. Let me try. Only for a moment. Joe! Don't you dare let go of my arms again. Uh, you almost went down. I... I guess... I guess I'm more tired than I... Joe! Joe! The 
Kledek. Help me lift him onto the raft. Lift him? Please, he's ill. He's very ill. No, Mrs. Bentley, you will not bring him into the raft. If you won't help me, I'll do it myself. I forbid you. There's a crowd of ten people when there should be only seven. If the raft is losing air, we will sink, we will drown. Hold up, Joel. Please hold up. Uh, look out, you're capsizing the raft. I can't do it myself. Uh, Please, won't someone help me? No one, Mrs. Bentley. They're all sick. They can do nothing for you. SA-16, AF-9072. Searching for Dakota survivors. Have you seen any? Over. Got somebody, Doug? Yeah, I can. Hold it. Okay, Baker and Ann, keep in contact. Transmit period tones for VHF homing purposes. We'll be listening to give you a steer. Over. Well? That was a commercial airline. What's the word? Nothing. Everybody's helping out, but what good will it do? I don't know, Doug. 1740, pouring buckets. I'm just afraid we're four hours too late. Maybe we're not. What do you mean? Look down there. Maybe we're not too late at all. Holy smoke, one, two, three rafts. Loaded. Send out a position, Doug. Let them all know. Right. All search and rescue craft. All search and rescue craft. SA-16 AF-9072 calling. Have located survivors. Have located Dakota survivors. Now here's position. Surface craft proceed at once to this position. 33 degrees, 28 minutes north, 1921 east. Repeating position of Dakota survivors. 33 degrees, 28 minutes north, 1921 east. We'll need assistance. Here's hoping we see you soon. Yeah, and here's hoping we don't get ourselves banged up going into that green. I better talk to the crew. Pilot to crew. We've located survivors. Now, it's going to be tough getting down to them and staying with them, but we've got to do it. Fasten your safety belts and prepare for water landing. Doug, yeah? Give me a reading on the wind. Yeah, uh, coming from the east, 20 knots. Okay, I'm gonna make a full flat, full stall landing into the wind, downwind from the raft. Good luck, Pappy. Holy smoke, that raft knocked over by a wave. Capsized. <laughs> Listening to the proudly we hail production Mediterranean Rescue. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. America is depending on her leaders in the air. If you are a young man between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, have had two or more years of college, and are otherwise qualified, you are eligible to join the ranks of America's leaders in the air. You can become an aviation cadet. The defense of our nation hangs heavily on our air strength, the finest in the world. But we cannot relax our efforts. The Air Force still needs pilots and aircraft observers. If you have the primary qualifications, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Ask about the Aviation Cadet Training Program. Do it now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Mediterranean Rescue. Just imagine yourselves in the cockpit of Captain Reeves' plane. Just imagine yourselves seeing what Captain Reeves saw as he brought his plane down on the heavy seas of the Mediterranean. The people in the life rafts. Some shrieking with joy, not seeming to mind the rain anymore. Some praying and some prostrate and numb with sickness, unmindful of anything. And the people in the water trying to swim for their lives, clutching at the waves as if they were solid agents of salvation. Captain Reeves made his full flap, full stall landing into the wind several hundred feet from the survivors. But as his plane made contact with the water, it skipped off the water, bounced like a rubber ball. Then, when it made contact again... Doug, place propellers in reverse to apply power. The plane squatted and remained on the water. It was undamaged in the landing. Wow. rock a bye baby. What now, Ken? We'll taxi it within about 50 feet. Okay. Should get closer, but I'm afraid to take a chance. Might be swimmers we can't see. Uh, I hope they're all there, Ken. Yeah. Okay, Doug, reduce power. 
All right, take over, Doug. I'm going to get the boys started. Right. Keep jockeying the throttles between forward and reverse thrust so we can hold on to this position. Right, Pappy, for you or anything. Hey, wait a minute, Ken. What's the matter? Some guy swimming toward the plane who looks like he's got a rope. Yeah, yeah, it is a rope, and it's tied to the raft. Good, at least they won't drift. Okay, okay, we're ready. Jim, Joe, open the port main hatch. Hey! Soupy, ready all the blankets. Hey! We got enough? Gee, I don't know, Captain. 32 people. We didn't figure on the rain and that raft getting spilled. Okay, those that don't get blankets will need dry clothes. We'll just have to use our own. Okay with me, Captain, so long as you don't take my pants. Well, maybe we won't have to. Gee, 32 people. Where are we going to put them? Well, let's not worry about that now. Jim, Joe. Hey, look, Captain. There's a guy down there below hatch. Throw him a line. Don't hit him on the head with it. I ain't that good, Captain. I used to pitch for the Giants. All right, take it easy, fella. Just wrap yourself in this blanket. Thank you, sir. Jameson, co-pilot. Reeves. Come on, fellas. Put your muscles behind that tow line. Bring in those rafts. Sit down, Jameson. Jim, Gibbsy, yep. inflate a raft and pick up everybody you find in the water. Okay. Uh, Jameson, uh, when you ditched your plane, was anyone hurt? None of the passengers that I could check with, Reeves. Of course, most of them are sick and I'm getting sicker. How about the crew? The pilot, Captain Harvey, broke his arm. He was thrown against the panel. Where is he? He was in the second draft. The one that capsized? No. Okay, when, uh, when you loaded the rafts, was everybody accounted for? Yes, I made the check myself, but since we lost that raft, I don't know, Reeves. There were ten people in it. Okay, try to get some rest. All right, get that raft to float on the double. Doug. Yeah? We need surface craft to get these people back to port. We'll never do it ourselves. Never get the plane off the water with the load we're going to have. I know, I know, Pappy. Won't you get through to anybody? I've been talking to every ship that's in the area, and there's one on the way here now. Which one? The SS Asterius. Great. How soon will she be here? Not before 2100, Ken. That's almost three hours. I know, Ken, but she's getting here as fast as she can. Oh, we got to do better. Those people out there have been kicked around for six hours already. Some of them may be dying. The skipper of the plane has a broken arm. We've got to get help. And we've got to have it before 2100. <laughs> Captain Reeves, with the help of his two men, hoisted the people out of the rafts and into the plane. Twenty exhausted, sick, and hysterical men and women. Twenty items of dead weight who were too numb from the ordeal to help themselves. The operation took almost an hour. Then... Okay. Okay, that does it for now. Yeah. The rest of the people in the water, let's hope that we can find them. Yeah, let's hope, Captain. It's getting dark. It's a tough break, Joe. You're getting hit so late. Yeah. Joe, uh, huh? take care of those people. Fix them up with blankets. Jake. Too bad we have them from hot coffee, too, sir. Yeah, it's too bad. Soupy. Captain. What's the matter with you? Feeling sick, Captain. Rocking of a plane. Oh, for Pete's sake, Soupy, I need you. Can you hold on for a while? I don't know, Captain. I, I'd like to. Okay, do the best you can. Keep a watch on the hatch. If the raft comes below, sing out. Yeah. Jameson, what's the situation? Any real sick ones? I don't know, Reeves. They seem to be suffering mostly from shock and exposure. Uh -huh. Two are unconscious, Mrs. Bentley and Miss Cartwright. Uh, looks more like exhaustion than anything else. How are you? Standing up. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at your pilot. Captain Reeves. Yeah? I'm Anton Ladak, diplomatic hurry on a very important mission. Yeah? I must get to my legation in Benghazi at once. How soon can we leave here? How soon? Yes, yes, how soon? I'm expected in Benghazi. Already I'm six hours behind schedule. Mr. Ladek, there are 12 people out there in the water. What do you want me to do, leave them? It is most embarrassing to me, this, uh, this delay. Sorry. Doug. How are you, Ken? I'm beat. Any news? A couple of British destroyers are on the way. Might get here in about an hour. Doug, an hour's no good. I know that, Ken, but what can I do? There's nothing, nothing closer. How about the Asturias? Where's she now? Still proceeding under full steam. But no dice before 2100. Oh, that's still an hour. Listen, Doug, the people we pulled out of the water, they're sick. They need medical attention. A couple of delirious. The pilot, Captain Harvey, his arm is broken. Ken. Have we got the whole Dakota crowd on board? I don't know. Jameson's counting noses now. Okay, let's say we've got them. 
We can't take off with that load, but maybe we can taxi. Yeah, maybe. Those swells might stop us cold. Okay, Doug, we'll take the chance. If Jameson says, we've got everybody. Excuse me, Mr. Leder, you're in my way. I must know, Captain Reeves. Why are you wasting valuable time? Now, look, Mr. Leder. Already it is dark. Already I'm more than seven hours late reporting to my legation in Benghazi. I'm a diplomatic courier. What are you waiting for? We can't take off, Mr. Leder. We've got 32 additional people on board besides the crew of six. That makes 38 people. I can add, Captain Reeves. Okay, then figure it out for yourself. I've got sick people to work. Wait a minute. You will concern yourself with me too, Captain Reeves. And you will stop giving me excuses. I have diplomatic privilege, and I demand that you take me to Benghazi. Uh, just a minute, Leydig. Don't you pull diplomatic privilege on me. I'm in command here, and I'll do what I think is right. We're not behind the Iron Curtain, in case you don't know it. Uh, you... Out of my way, I've got work to do. You, you will not insult me in this way. I shall report this incident to my government. I shall complain about your conduct. I shall... What's the matter? Uh, I... I'm sick. Very sick. You... Inside. Yeah, I know the symptoms. The port main hatch is still open. Stick your head through and let yourself go. Yes, yes. Jameson. Mrs. Bentley Reeves. She came to a few minutes ago. Her husband. What's the matter with him? I finished my count and he's missing. Oh, for... Joe, Soupy. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What's cooking, Chief? There's a man out there. How do you feel, Soupy? Okay, now, it must have been something I ate. I'll bet. Get into a raft, you guys, and start fishing for that man on the double. Bentley, we're doing all we can. If your husband's anywhere out there, we'll find him. You'll never find him. I wanted to bring him into the raft. I tried. That man refused. He wouldn't help. He wouldn't raise his finger. Miss Bentley. I was holding on to Joe with all my strength. And then I don't know what happened. Something happened to me. I don't remember. They tell me you lost consciousness. Yes. Yes, that must have been it. But that man, Joe, would be here. He'd be alive. It was only a holiday. We waited so long. So long. Miss Bentley, I don't know what I can say, except we won't leave here until we're sure. Absolutely sure. <laughs> Help should be arriving soon. A ship, maybe two, that'll get the others to port, but we'll stay. Thank you, Captain Reeve. Thank you so much. But I feel it quite hopeless. Maybe not. Let's wait and see. Please excuse me now. Of course. Thank you. Jameson. You think there's a chance your men will find him? Who knows? With those conditions out there, it'll be a miracle. How's your pilot? I don't really know, but I'm terribly afraid for him. His arm is badly swollen and discolored. That's too bad. Try to make him as comfortable as possible. I've got to check the radio. Uh, Reeves. Yeah? My compliments. You've been superb. Thanks. What goes, Doug? Oh, I've kept my chin up so long, I've got a stiff neck. Any word from the rest of the world? It looks like it's going to be the Asturias. She's really bearing down. Between you and me, I'd be glad to see a rowboat right now. Yeah, me too. How's the comrade coming along? Ladek? He's groaning his guts out in a corner. That's where he belongs. Yeah. What about Joe and Soupy? You seen them lately? I've got all the lights on, wings, nose, and tail. I'm getting worried about those guys, Ken. Yeah, so am I. They've been on half an hour. Doug, if that guy was afloat, they'd have found him by now. Yeah. Only hope they didn't get kicked over by a wave. Well, there are a couple of good swimmers, Ken. They could have made it back to the plane. Maybe, but it's building out there. Maybe I was crazy to send them out, but... I don't know, Doug. We, we just couldn't forget the guy, leave him. We couldn't turn our back on him. You're a tired pappy, Ken. Listen to your grandfather, will you? Don't blame yourself. You did what you had to, and you did it fine. Yeah, but Joe and Soupy... Yeah, are... Joe and Soupy. It'll take more than the Mediterranean to keep those corn cobblers down. Look out there. Where? Right there in the beam of that light. The raft. Yeah, and there are three guys in it. They picked up Bentley. What else, Captain? What else?
Joe Bentley was brought aboard the SA-16. His ordeal was over. The ordeal of clinging to an overturned life raft for over three hours. And 15 minutes later, the Asturias arrived on the scene. The ordeal was over for all of them. The crew and passengers were transferred from the plane. The sick and injured were promptly taken care of. Rescue mission accomplished. <laughs> To Captain Kendrick Reeves, USAF, for courage beyond the endurance of man, for the exercise of sound judgment under the most difficult conditions, for the tenacity with which you stuck to your assignment until it was successfully completed, proudly we hail, salute you. You, Captain Reeves, your co-pilot, and the men of your crew. But before we say goodbye to Captain Reeves, let's go to Wheelis Field again where he and Doug Clayton are wearily on their way home after filing their report. Oh, boy. Sleep. Boy, am I going to sleep. Oh, perchance to dream. Boy, what dreams I'm going to have. <laughs> hey, listen, Pappy. If I want to dream, I'll dream. I'm off duty now. <laughs> No, I wasn't laughing at that, Doug. No? no? I was, uh, I was thinking of Anton Ladek. Nightmares. <laughs> His diplomatic mission is in Benghazi. Maybe he doesn't know it yet, but the, uh, Asturias is bound for Malta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going back where he came from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Young men of America, your country is building a mighty air force to maintain the security of our nation. This means that there is a job for you, the chance to do an important job with one of the finest organizations of its kind in the world today, the United States Air Force. If you are between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, have had two or more years of college, and are otherwise qualified, the Air Force needs you as part of the Aviation Cadet Training Program. For complete details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.